well, this is going to be a very busy week, no? So, marami tayong natutunan sa araw-araw na pagdinig ng, ano, ng Kamara regarding sa pagbabago ng ating konstitusyon. At marami tayong nalalaman na mga pabor na o pwedeng makuha no? ang ating mamamayan pag binago natin yung ating konstitusyon. So, talagang uh, nagkatrabaho ang House of Representatives uh, almost araw-araw ginagabi yung mga congressman natin uh, dahil ginagampan na natin yung ating trabaho para maipasa no, sa lalong madaling panahon. Pero hindi naman natin ito minamadali, talagang uh, hinihimay-himay ng mabuti para uh, makita natin kung ano yung mga kagandahan na maidudulot sa ekonomiya pag binago natin yung ating konstitusyon. So, uh, maraming maraming salamat sa pagbibigay sa amin ng oportunidad para ano, mailahad din namin kung ano yung trabaho at ginagawa namin dito sa House of Representatives. Maraming salamat. Uh, good morning everyone. First of all, I'd like to greet each and every one of you. Not only uh, female members of the press, but all members of the press who are allies in the fight for gender equality. A happy Women's Month. I look forward to our press conference this morning and later on I'll explain to you how uh, the proposed uh, amendments to the economic provisions of our constitution can positively impact the lives of many women. Just for starters, pag dumami po ang mga investors natin at nag-generate po employment, kung suriin niyo po yung ating mga different sectors currently that are enjoying you know, these uh, limited amounts of investments. Most of them are women. Women who work in BPOs, in manufacturing sector, etc., etc. So we look forward to hearing your questions and uh, let's uh, start the ball rolling. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sirs. Uh, let us recognize Tina Panganipan Perez from GMA7 for today's first question. Um, for everyone, Paul, um, Attorney Romulo Macalindao says it is unconstitutional to hold the plebiscite for charter change simultaneous with the 2025 elections. Your thoughts, Paul? Ah, okay. Well, I I welcome the opinion of uh, Attorney Macalindao. And ako naman, ever since we talked about um, conducting a plebiscite for um, amending the charter, I have been consistent in my position na hindi po talaga dapat isabay po ito sa midterm elections natin. Ang unang dahilan uh, sa pananaw ko po is we cannot um, allow that the Constitution undergo political mudslinging and be politicized by what happens during the midterm elections where um, politicians go back and forth. No? Um, number two, we cannot allow that the Constitution um, be tackled in the same level as a midterm elections because mas mahalagang pag-usapan natin lamang ang Constitution kaya dapat nakabukod po ito pagdating sa pagbobotohan. At ngayon sa inilabas ni Attorney Makalintal na posisyon na iligal po ito, Siguro ngayon, meron na rin po tayong legal basis para ipakiusap na imbis na isabay, agahan na lang po natin yung pagkukontak po natin ng plebisito pagdating sa amendments ng ating salido batas. Um, you know, the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And we have to protect it. We have to uphold it. We have to safeguard it. And in doing so, we have to make sure that um, when we do conduct amendments and go through a plebiscite for it, nakatutok lamang ang atensyon at pag-uunawa ng tao sa pag-uusapan natin. Kasi pag inilabas po natin ang ating mga amendments, you know, we cannot allow that the Filipino people do not understand um, what the amendments are and whether they are beneficial and and how are they going to help uh, progress the country moving forward. So we welcome the position of Attorney Makarital and I hope our friends in the Senate 
will be enlightened by the legal opinion of the good lawyer. Maraming salamat. Um, may I just add, the uh, position of Attorney Makanintala only affirms the House's stand that uh, uh, a plebiscite, a separate plebiscite should be held. And the idea of holding it together with national elections is uh, counterproductive. It is also a reminder to our colleagues in the Senate that uh, we will have to work with a sense of urgency. If uh, the ultimate goal is basically to approve RPH 6, it should be approved at the time when we do not have to uh, um, hold a plebiscite alongside the national elections. Maliwanag po yan, hindi po uh, mabuti na mangyari yan, pagsasabay. At uh, sa ganitong uh, katahilanan ay dapat medyo maging efficient po tayo sa ating trabaho. Just a friendly reminder. Kung, gusto, kung mas gusto natin na mas maitindihan ng ating mamamayan kung ano yung binabago sa ating konstitusyon, Mas maganda na ihiwalay na lamang ito at gabing mas maaga ang plebisito dahil mahirap kung nadadamay sa politika no ang ating konstitusyon so uh, mas maganda kung ano kung uh, mangyari nga kung ano yung matagal nang uh, gusto ng House of Representatives na, ma na mas maging maaga yung plebisito na mangyayari sa pagbabago sa ating konstitusyon para din maintindihan, maunawaan, at may, may isa puso ng ating mga kabagayan. Um, for me, ano, I, I agree with my, my colleagues. Uh, sabi na rin ni DS uh, JJ. Um, the Constitution has to be on a pedestal, a platform on its own. At hindi nga po natin dapat talaga siya na sinasabay sa midterm elections. Kaya nga po tayo may RBH 7 ngayon. Um, we are showing them that this is purely economic tong exercise natin na to, tong ginagawa natin na to. And inaalis po natin yung lagi nilang sinasaksak na sinasabi na political, political yung cha-cha ngayon. Kaya nga, we're, we're, we're one with the, with the House um, with regards to economic cha-cha. And pag dumating na po sa plebisito, ipapakita rin po natin na it's not about, uh, it's not political, it's really economic. Thank you. Yeah. May, may I just add, um, uh, DS? Go ahead, uh, go ahead. Pinag-uusapan din lang yung naisisingit, no, na uh, supposedly mayroong hidden agenda na magsingit ng mga political amendments. Uh, Paulit-ulit naman mo namin pinapangako, no, sa ating mga hibigan sa Senado, na talagang what you see is what you get. We have RB7, RBH7, Ito po ay purely economic provisions. Well, from a political point of view, it would be political suicide for any politician to, you know, mag mag uh, sisingit pa siya ng mga political amendments. I mean, no politician in his right mind would actually try or even attempt to uh, introduce political amendments. When for the longest time, we have been assuring our friends in the Senate Na we are only interested in amending the economic provisions. And of course, malino naman yung uh, uh, pakiusap din ng ating Pangulo. Malino din po ang pakiusap na, ng ating speaker. Purely economic provisions lang po. So yung mga medyo irrational fears, isang tabi na po natin. At kung yan ang nagsisilbing balakid para serisohin natin ang pagtalakay ng RBH 6 sa Senado. Dito po kami sa lower house, sa aming RBH7, ang tali na namin paano na umuusad. Eh, ni Saguni-Guni, wala pong sumasagi dyan na political amendment. So, uh, trust us. Trust us. And, um, you know what? It's not good to operate on on the basis of irrational fears. Eh. Walang mangyayari. Kung ganyan din naging mentalidad, uh, siguro nung panahon ay pinaglalaban ng kababainihan ng karapatang ng magkoto, Takot kasi baka naman yung mga babae eh, medyo uh, subject to their uh, mood swings. Baka hindi makapili ng tamang na maglilingkot sa ating bahay. Kung ganyan ang pinairal natin, mga fears, eh siguro hanggang ngayon, hindi pa bumubot yung mga kababaihan. Hindi po ba? Just to put some sort of uh, parallelisms. Uh, what we really need is uh, to be rational, to be professional about it, and be efficient. Yeah, just to end, no, yung tama yung sinabi ni Pao. Uh, kaya hindi ko maintindihan yung gusto ng Senate na isabay yung 
uh, plebisito sa midterm elections. Akala ko ba sila yung nangangamba na may political aspect yung amendments ng constitution? Eh sila mismo, pinupoliticize na nila by the mere fact that they want it coinciding with the midterm elections. So, we welcome the opinion. Now I hope uh, we can move forward with this and find out clearly uh, when we can have the plebiscite in the soonest possible time. At mahalaga din siguro malaman natin kung ano ba ang timeline ng Senate uh, sa kanila. Kasi kami, uh, 11 o'clock na yata kami nag, uh, suspend nung nakarang linggo. Uh, tuloy-tuloy po yung uh, discussions namin sa RB87 and continues din po yung uh, commitment ng ating House Speaker that we need an exhaustive, uh, inclusive deliberations on these amendments. Thank you. Uh, Haji Kaamino from Brigada, you can ask your question. Morning po mga kongs. Um, over the weekend, Senator uh, Cynthia Villar was saying that uh, at least seven senators would vote against the uh, proposed uh, charter amendments. Ang uh, binabanggit po niya, apat po doon, ay mga uh, allies so, or kaalyado po ni uh, Pangulong Marcos. And at the same time, ang sabi din po niya ay uh, may mga nakausap daw po siya ng mga businessmen na mas maganda raw po na tutukan na lang yung implementation ng ease of doing business law and address uh, corruption issues. What do you think are the uh, contributing factors so kung bakit parang medyo um, may lack of support sa Senado dun po sa sinusulong? And yung thoughts po ninyo dun sa statements ni Senator Cynthia Bittier. Thank you po. Uh, for which kamo ay mga allies of the President, if they were really allies, they would actually listen to the request of our President to amend the economic provisions of the Constitution. Um, is this what businessmen are really saying? I'd like to hear directly from them because so far I've been listening to businessmen say that uh, this will actually be beneficial to our country. Uh, with regard to the implementation of the ease of doing business, it is being implemented, but really the problem here is the fact, and I've heard this during our deliberations, that there is a lack of capital in our country to be able to invest big time no, in important sectors such as energy. Parang meron kakulangan ng kapital dito sa Pilipinas. Now, I have also been told, especially nung uh, na, nakakausap ko rin sa grassroots na medyo tinatawag ko namin mga kaliwa, sabi nila to, ma'am, takot po kasi yung mga <laughs> ibang businessman, lalo yung mga big time businessman, ng pagkakaroon ng kompetensya from foreign investors, they will lose their monopolies. And I feel, you know, if you're really loyal to the interests of a country, you will welcome competition. And you know, all, all know that. Competition is good. Because but when there is competition, companies will buy for customers and clients. And how do they do that? By improving the quality of their services, their products, and also by lowering prices. So this is how these uh, amendments to the economic provision can directly impact the lives of so many Filipinos. I would like to think, of course, that our, our senators remain loyal to their true calling, which is to protect the interests of the Filipino people, not um, the interests of a few monopolies. Just to add to what um, the good congresswoman has mentioned, so competition breeds excellence. So if you want to have better products, better services, better employment opportunities, uh, better high paying jobs for the Filipino people, we need to allow them to come in. Um, it was raised last week that yes, kailangan natin bawasan yung corruption. Yes, we need to improve the ease of doing business. And the uh, Marcos administration has been steadfast in doing that. But we also need to send a signal to the world. Now the doors of the Philippines is open for more foreign direct investments to come in, which will only bring more opportunities for the Filipino people. Mm -hmm. um, with regards to um, the number that was stated, na Boboto against, I think um, it is now incumbent on the Senate President 
uh, to show his leadership, to muster enough votes so that we can get the RB86 approved in the Senate. Kasi kami naman po dito sa House, hindi nyo na naman po kami siguro kailangan tanongin pagdating sa leadership issue, unquestionable at unequivocal yung support na namin kay Speaker Martin Romualdez and of course to the President as well. So um, if indeed, Gerald then made an excellent point, if indeed they are allies, then walk off the talk, support the President. And the, and the President has already given his uh, marching orders when it comes to amendments on the Constitution. Um, hindi ko pa kilala, no? Kasi yun yung dito na, na senators na yun. Pero maybe they're, they're just throwing a, a number or may, may paramdam na po na ganun. Pero I'm more focused on yung statement na business uh, businessmen na parang they're not in favor. Um, for me, they should engage dun sa hearings po ng RBH6 kasi dun po nila ilalabas yung side nila eh. So, engage in the debate, in the discussions, then yung tao po ang titingin dyan eh, ng advantages sa disadvantages. Baka naman po, uh, hindi yung para kay Juan, eh hindi naman po para sa karamihan. So, dapat makita po natin yung advantages and disadvantages po nilalabas. Especially if these are business tycoons, moguls, or big business people, then they should show na ito pong, ito pong they should weigh on the pros and cons. So, uh, I suggest that they attend the hearings or even attend the hearings here in the House of Representatives. <coughs> Yun lang po. So, dito talaga natin nakikita no, kung sino talaga yung nagmamalasakit uh, sa ating bansa. Uh, kung sino talaga yung may kagustuhan ng pagbabago na mapaunlad yung buhay ng ating mga mamayan. Uh, matanggal na yung konstitusyon natin na naandyan at uh, marami ang nagsasabi na yung mga may hirap, lalo naghihirap no? dahil nga takot yung ating mga, takot yung ating mga negosyante, yung mga uh, negosyante sa ibang basa na mamumunan sa Pilipinas dahil nga uh, naging sagapal dito yung ating konstitusyon. So, dito mo makikita na talagang uh, Congress is doing everything no? na magagawa niya para uh, matulungan yung ating mamamayan na magkaroon ng trabaho. Nakita naman natin na sa mga pandinig no, na nakaraang tatlong araw, marami ang nagsasabi, mga ekonomista, mga mga konstitusyonalist no, na nagsasabi na kailangan talagang baguhin ang ating konstitusyon dahil nagiging sagabal ito na sa mga uh, gustong mamuhunan dito sa ating bansa. So, sana maging open-minded yung ating mga senador, no? Uh, wag lang sana nilang tignan yung uh, kung ano yung kanilang kalagayan ngayon dahil siguro marami sa kanila may mga pinuproteksyonan din na, na mga interest, no? Na negosyo or may pinuproteksyonan na na kanya-kanyang uh, pagmumanipula ng kanilang ano, ah, uh, negosyo, no? So, uh, sana, no? Uh, sabi nga nila maging open-minded, sana, yung ating mga senador sa pagbabago. Thank you. I would like to recognize Elson Kismorio from Manila Bulletin for the next question. Hello po, good morning, and happy Women's Month po. Uh, this is for every, everyone po. If we could hear, if, if we could please hear po your insights regarding the, yung pong lack of rules sa Senate sa, uh, on ano, kung paano po nila, I mean, they don't have a process po, no, dun sa how to bring about yung constitutional amendment. Dalawang senador na po yung sumisita nito. I don't know if you can interpret na paninita, but clearly they are parang, they don't see the, the point of holding hearings. Wala naman pala silang rules. I'm talking about Senators Chis Escudero and uh, Coco Pimentel. So, majority and minority po yun. Uh, just your thoughts po. And don't you think this constitutes a parang sincerity issue? Like, bakit po nagsasabi yung Senate noon na by March, kaya po nilang ipasa yung RPH 6, eh wala pa po sila. Rules pala, unlike dito po sa House. Uh, anyone po? 
Um, well, if they don't have rules to uh, continue their uh, RBH6, I, as mentioned by Senator Cheese and Senator Cuoco, Suguro, ang pinakamagandang payo, pumunta na lang sila dito sa Congress kasi tayo, meron na tayong governing rules. Or they can always adopt the rules. Um, uh, the House is um, conducting itself with. Um, this has already been mentioned by uh, Senate President Riggs earlier na wala ka nga silang uh, rules to govern. So, sana ma-address ka ganyan yung issue na to. Dahil tumatakbo po yung hearings nila, from what I know, and they started way ahead of the House, a month ahead of the House. So, I hope they can address this issue. Um, number two, uh, when it comes to sincerity, you know, it will always be uh, shown with action. You know, we can say everything and anything that we want. Kasi lang kung hindi naman po ito magtatranslate sa mga konkretong hakbang na makikita, mararamdaman, at magpapatunay na totoo nga yung sinasabi mo. So, mahirap ang hawakan yun. Uh, kami naman po dito sa House, we've been very transparent from day one. Nakikita niyo naman po yung takbo ng mga... Um, deliberations namin, at saka nakikita nyo, meron din po kaming mga sinusunod na rules base na rin po sa uh, alituntunin ng uh, Kongreso. So, for the Senate, uh, you can adopt our rules, or if not, you can join us in the deliberations. And we can be one happy family. Bago ko may sumagot po ba? So, you think, sir, uh, this falls on the shoulders of the of Senate leadership. Again, again. It falls on the sh shoulders of the Senate leadership. No, well, definitely the majority leader will have to address this issue. Um, kasi dito sa amin, pagdating sa mga rules, uh, uh, it's uh, majority leader Manix Dalipe who uh, makes sure that there are rules governing uh, committees and house deliberations and the way we conduct ourselves. So, ang suggestion ko po siguro, uh, tingnan po natin at pakiusapan po natin yung ating uh, uh, majority leader ng Senado para gumawa na siya ng mga magpupusa siya ng mga rules. Dahil kasama naman yata siya sa umakda ng RB86, di sana napag-aralan din po nila at napaghandaan kung papaano at yung proseso na tatalakayin at uh, uh, dadaanan and the good thing about it is that um, they are aware of it and they can do something about it. At meron pong suggestions and undergaling dito sa house, no? So the sincerity will be tested on how soon they respond to the situation. If they immediately um, adopt rules or they come up with it, how many hours do you actually need to come up with rules? Actually, we have here sections 140. In section 144. Four. Dalawang paragraph lang po. Mahirap pa Kayang-kaya yan. Ang mga senador. Diba? So, dun masusukat talaga. Kaya nyo. Hindi naman ganun ka-complicated yan. Parang guidelines lang naman. Lang. Eh, kasi nga, sanay tayo dito sa House of Representatives. Pag meron isang sitasyon, meron konting pili, may konting duda. And si Rita, ang bilis magtrabaho from the Committee on Rules na susulog solvan. We never sit on it, do we? And uh, so, yun, dun natin makikita yung sincerity nila. Uh, yun nga, uh, lubhang talagang nakakabahala no? at nakakadismaya na hanggang ngayon nakakatatlong hearing na yung uh, Senate, no? pero wala pa pala silang ano, no? uh, alituntunin regarding sa economic cha-cha. Dito mo makikita yung sinceridad at yung transparency sa procedures na ginagawa ng House of Representatives. Dahil dito, malinaw, uh, talagang meron kami sinustod na alitintunin. So, sana wag ito maging sagabal, no? Uh, Tungo sa pagbabago ng ating konstitusyon, uh, wag ito ang dahilan para maging bumagal yung proseso uh, para makatulong tayo sa ating mga mamayan. Um, I agree with the, the statements. Uh, yung concerns ni Senator Cheese, um, I've said it. I've said it during the, during the first uh, press conference. Yata yun eh. 
sabi ko, may, baka may lapse sa legislative process, kaya medyo hindi kami nagkakaintindihan during yung the first sala po nung, nung nagkainitan sa House and the Senate ng konti. Sabi ko, baka may gap sa legislative process. And yun nga, it, I think it's showing na kasi dito sa Congress, pagkaupo po namin, first, first meeting po namin na sa Committee on Rules, ang unang binitawa ni Majo Manix Dalipe was, sa Committee on Rules, rules rule. So napaka-importante po nung nasight ni Kong Geraldine na dapat lahat ng gagawin natin procedures, proceedings dito, eh may sinusunod po tayo na IRR. Nung nga pong unang araw na natin ng RB87, halos Hanggang gabi, kalahating araw, pinagdedebatihan po sa pinag-uusapan po natin yung simpleng rules kung paano, paano, how to go on with the Committee of the Whole, yung NPAC Committee natin for RBH7. So, siguro, baka may communication gap sila or siguro nagmadali or siguro kailangan nilang i-address to as, as soon as possible. Kasi paano naman nag-umpisa kung hindi natin, ano, hindi natin nilagyan ng rules yung ating mga committee hearings. Yun lang po. Thank you. Thank you po. Thank you. I'd like to call on Kat Forbes from Radio Filipinas for her question. Good morning po. Uh, Mag-other topic lang po muna ako, no? Para medyo simmer down ng muna tayo. Um, kay Kong Geraldine, uh, ano pong ginagawa ng ating uh, committee for the celebration po ng uh, Women's Month? Baka po, aside from the All Women's Session later, baka po pero ma-share niyo po yung mga activities natin. Marami tayong activities pero kaka-inform lang sa akin ng uh, Gabriela Partilis na yung ating forum on alarming trends in gender-based violence ay mapopostpone po to March 13, uh, from 9 to 11 a.m. Very interesting po itong forum na to. So as you mentioned, this afternoon we have our all-women session and we'd like to thank the House leadership for not postponing the celebration to our traditional all-women session. Kasi nga, uh, alam natin, very urgent na po itong uh, talakayan tungkol sa economic uh, provisions no, ng Constitution. And yet, uh, they accommodated us. We want to thank them for that. This afternoon, you will see a series of uh, privileged speeches delivered by our female legislators. And of course, lahat ng mga uh, major roles sa loob po ng session, ng plenario ay kagampalan po ng mga kababaihan. Uh, but that said, I would also like to give you a short uh, update on ano the ginagawa from the Committee on Women and Gender Equality. We recently approved, of course, number one, the Social Equality Bill. Uh, we're waiting for its scheduling sa plenario po. Uh, Inapprovan din po namin sa committee yung uh, uh, expansion ng ating uh, VAUSI law, anti-VAUSI law, to include electronic and online form of forms of violence. We also approved yung women in uh, positions of power or in politics uh, bill, which uh, seeks to increase the number of women in our political parties by adopting a quota system and a series of incentives. So ito po ang ginagawa namin muna sa Committee on Women and Gender Equality. And this morning, we, of course, we held our flag raising ceremony. Uh, nag, nag, uh, <coughs> na, well, um, I'm sure you must have had already a copy of our uh, gender uh, responsive language in, in the house. So ito po yung mga achievements natin po mula sa committee. So antabayan nyo na lang po kasi we're coming up and finalizing the different activities for Women's Month and we hope that most of you will cover these activities and you will also join them. Thank you. Kami naman po mga kalalakihan ay nagaanda na rin po sa uh, to celebrate the Women's Month. Handa na po yung laundry soap namin. Handa na po yung plancha namin. Handa na po yung mantika at kasarola dahil isang libong, isang buwan po kami maghuhugas, maglalaba, magkasampay, o plancha at magluluto sa ating mga tahanan. Thank you for that. Next question naman po. 
for all the comments po, no, um, hindi lang po ng reaction ninyo or comment on the recent announcement po ng BBM na meron na pong 106.3 billion pesos na allocated for the 40s program po. Uh, especially po sa inyo po mga distrito, gano'n po kahalaga ito na meron na pong budget for 40s? Uh, well, uh, yan ang pagpapatunay na sa administrasyon ni Presidente Marcos, walang naiiwan. Uh, sa bagong Pilipinas, walang naiiwan. At dito rin natin na, na ipapakita na yung pagtutulungan no, ng executive at saka ng kongreso, eh talagang uh, mga kababayan natin yung nakikinabang. So, natutuwa kami na marami tayong mga kababayan na matutulungan, marami tayong mga nangangailangan mga kababayan na uh, masusuportahan ng uh, for peace, no? At talagang uh, ito naman talaga yung pangako ng ating presidente na uh, at saka ni speaker na uh, sa ating administrasyon ngayon eh, tao ang mauuna, mamamayan na mauuna at saka pipili din talaga nating may ahon sa kahirapan yung ating mga kababayan. ko na siingit kanina yung sa women's month ko eh. Kasi kami ni Kong J, sa kanya ni Kong J, we celebrate uh, women's month every day. <laughs> Three times a day. Sabi na nila. Sana all. O, diba? So, lahat naman tayo. Ano, dapat sinicelebrate po natin yan kasi uh, every day is women's month. Women's day. Pala. So, reaction lang. Big reaction lang. We've been advocating this naman. We've been Uh, we, uh, the House has been uh, with a firm stand, yung mga tulong po na nabibigyan natin sa constituents natin. And kailangan po kasi talaga ito. Nakikita po ng ating presidente. Hindi lang po sa, hindi lang po sa pang-araw-araw kaya nakita nila yung, yung need na ituloy po yung mga ganitong programa sa kapalakasin. So, with, the, with, with that, um, yung mga binababa pong ganyan na programa is nakaready po kaming sumuporta kahit na sa anong, sa anong bagay, simpleng pagdalo, simpleng kahit nga magpamirienda lang po kami, simpleng pagsuporta. Um, anything po na para sa mamamayan, eh, nakasuporta po ang House of Representatives. Thank you. Yes, yes. may habol ko. Kakapadala lang sa akin ang aming committee secretariat. On March 7, we will be holding a gender fear language training from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. Uh, to be announced yung online feature in Empowered Voices, Women of Congress. We also have a seminar on the role of ICT in mitigating online gender-based violence on March 14. We also have a recognition ceremony for gender sensitivity trainers on March 14. On March 15, we will have a gender sensitivity training for janitorial services personnel. Tapos sa uh, March 21, meron kaming release ng Bawal Ang Bastos publication. And on March 19, 2021, we have uh, women's health and wellness activities. For example, we have a lecture on, men on menopause, lecture on anger management. Although, palagi ko mas bagay ito sa mga lalaki o sa mga babae pa. Lecture on HPV, cervical screening, and breast exam screening. Also, fasting, blood sugar, and foot, foot doppler on March 21. That is been coming to be announced. Women with uh, with uh, with disabilities day celebration. So an kabayanan po niya. And then also when it comes to the legislation, we are pushing for the passage of the fundal, fundamental equality under the Family Code Bill because at present ang ating mga batas laging may final say ang mga kalalakihan in property issues, child rearing, laging sila mga final say. Akala mo naman lahat na lalaki matino, di ba? So what we're asking for is uh, pantay lang yung say ng kababaihan sa uh, sinasabi na ng kalalakihan and there should be an independent arbiter to determine and resolve these uh, these conflicts. Yun lang po. Buti na lang yung mga Just tatlong to... kasama mo rito, Matino. Oo oh, oh, nga, sana bubupusin mo na. <laughs> anyway, um, on the recent announcement that uh, for peace uh, sana hindi mabawasan tong pondong to tulad nangyari sa mga nakarang mga taon 
Alam niyo, nung ako po ay bumisita sa aking distrito at nakausap po yung ilan sa mga four-piece beneficiaries, marami po sa kanila nagre-reklamo sa akin dahil may isang taon hindi po nila natanggap yung dapat po nilang matatanggap. Meron din po mga pagkakataon na bigla na lang nawala sila sa listahan tapos nagulat sila, lumitaw na naman yung pangalan nila. So, natutuwa po tayo ng impact ang pondo at sigurado naman po itong pakikinabangan ng ating mga uh, kababayang Pilipino. Uh, huwag po natin kakalimutan na nasa panahon pa rin po tayo ng pagbangon mula sa pandemya. Kaya yung mga programa tulad ng 4Ps, tulad ng mga ayuda, ay hindi dapat nilalagyan ng anumang uh, sagapan o paghaharang o paghihirap pagdating sa beneficyo na pwede po nitong maibigay sa ating mga tao dahil dinanakawan po natin sila ng pagkakataong umangat mula sa kahirapan. So, we welcome the announcement and we're very happy and pleased uh, with the fund um, and we hope that it will reach every Filipino family that is part of the program. Marami salamat. Ang Geraldine? Yes. Do you have any comment on uh, the same issue? Oh, okay, on the four piece. Definitely welcome yan. Kailangan yan. But uh, at the same time, uh, we as legislators are fully aware that the four piece is just a stopgap measure. The ultimate goal is still makagraduate po itong 4.4 million households from below poverty levels to a better economic status. And syempre po, uh, we look forward, mahaba na po ang kasaysayan ng 4Ps at hindi po natin mapagkakaila ang naitutulong nito sa mga pamilyang Pilipino. So we welcome that development. Thank you. From UNTV, uh, Rosa De Cos, you are recognized, ma'am. Good morning po. Uh, related po ito sa question ni Haji earlier, Senator Coco Pimentel also mentioned four senators who will be voting no sa chacha. Congressman Ortega mentioned before that maybe they're just throwing a number. But is this a cause of concern, lalo na po at pinagbubuusan talaga po ng efforts ng pro-administration lawmakers yung pong economic chacha? Um, madami po kasing pwedeng mangyari eh, uh, before they vote on it. Um, I cannot speak for them on how will they vote, but if it was me on their filling up their shoes, then you talk to yourself, you, you, you ask your conscience, you ask the people, you ask your mga nasasakopan mo. Ma, for me, until the vote is cast, um, there's still hope. And I hope that they're, <laughs> they're not thinking about poli uh, politica. I hope that they're thinking about the economy. That, that's, all, that's only my reaction. I also say that uh, uh, to those four, kung totoo sila nga ay kontra din sa amin, uh, pakinggan nyo muna, hayaan nyo muna matapos yung deliberations and discussions. And as uh, Kung Paolo said, listen to the people. You know, itong past weekends in my district, we're holding our annual uh, Women's uh, Month celebration. So every weekend, I meet like 4,000, 5,000 women. And then we discuss itong economic provisions. Um, we link it uh, to their daily problems, no? yung taas ng kuryente, taas ng tubig, taas ng mga paunahin, bilihin, kakulangan ng trabaho. And we can see that uh, may epekto po ang pagpasok ng positive effect, ang pagpasok po ng mga foreign investors. Kaya nga lang, yun na naman tayo, ang problema na palakid na nilalagay po dyan sa ating economic provisions. And most of them, especially the women, support itong uh, amendments to the economic provisions. So, I'm saying this because kami po, dito sa House of Representatives, we are in direct engagement with the people. And when we see the problems that people have on a daily basis, and you know in your heart, ito na po yung solution. And we're not making motherhood statements, nor are we positioned, comfortably positioned on ivory towers. In touch po kami. I think this is the reason why we feel passionately about passing uh, RBH 7. Dahil ito na eh. You know, it doesn't take you know, much to understand. Common sense lang naman ito eh. So, ayun po, naasa ko na sana magiging sensitive 
yung kung meron man nung apat na kumakontra at bago siya gumawa ng final decision, pakinggan na muna po ang sinasabi ng mga potential investors at sinasabi rin ng taong bayan. Uh, Doon sa mga political aspects, sinasabi ko sa inyo, yung mga mostly kumakontra, yung mga iba't ibang grupos, on the basis of the supposed and alleged existence of a, a hidden political agenda, walang ganon, mare. <laughs> walang ganon. Purely economic provisions. Thanks, man. Ano ba ba ang kailangan para paniwalaan nyo kami? It would be political suicide na magsingit kami ng mga political amendments. We just want, sabi nga ng Pangulo, amendments to the economic provisions. If that is the only reason why you're hesitant to support RBH6 or RBH7, ito na po. We're promising you. Please, listen. Again, this is a question of leadership in the Senate, no? Uh, dito talaga natin makikita kung sino talaga yung sumusuporta sa kagustuhan ng ating Pangulo para mapaunlad ng ating bansa. So, kami rito sa House, gagawin namin yung aming trabaho dahil 100% inisuportahan natin ang liderato ng ating Pangulo kung ano yung kanyang gustong uh, mangyari na pabuti para sa ating bansa. Uh, 100% ang aming suporta sa dunong at kaalaman at liderato ng ating Speaker of Montes, no? So, dito talaga natin makikita kung sino talaga yung, ano, yung talagang uh, may pagmamahal uh, para sa ating bansa. Um, what I do hope it's not a sign of things to come. Because kung titignan po natin, uh, parang nagbibilang na sila kung sinong hindi boboto. Parang mas maganda sanang kwento, <clears throat> makakapagbilang sila ng sumusuporta. Tapos bilang sasabihin nila, wala pa silang rules to properly govern themselves when it comes to tackling amendments of the Constitution. How come we're starting to see more hindrances? Una, sinabi nila, ayaw namin yan dahil may politika. Nung malinaw na walang politika at nag-uumpisa na kami para <coughs> sabayan yung discussion ng Senado, <coughs> ngayon naman, wala silang rules. So, <coughs> ano ba talaga? Kasi malinaw na malinaw na po, ano pa ba bang kailangan natin makita? You know, the, it's, the writing's clearly on the wall that the Philippines is lagging behind. What else do we need to see to realize that we need to open our, <coughs> our economy to more foreign direct investments? So, I do hope and I still pray that the Senate will see um, the significance, the importance, and and will be enlightened when it comes to deciding uh, what for the fate of the nation. Another point lang po. Um, although nung Wednesday po, inabot nga po ng 11 p.m. yun pong deliberations ng House Committee of the Whole, but an opposition solon last week also said, na kakaunti na lang po yung natitira pag lumalalim yung gabi. Particularly, representative Arlene Rosas. She said, dapat siabot na kami ng inla oras at gabi na natitira po doon makabayan block. So gusto ko lang sabihin na hindi dapat ganoon Sa Committee of the Whole, dapat Committee of the Whole ang nagdi-discuss dahil yan ay tinutulak nilang measure. Reaction lang po. Um, I was there until 11, and I'm not part of the Makabayan block. <clears throat> and I think there are uh, other congressmen that were present as well uh, during the deliberations. Uh, but of course, we encourage um, uh, active participation <clears throat> by more congressmen, and their attendance is so required. So um, with that being said, uh, we do respect her opinion and her observation. Um, and you can be rest assured that the majority will properly conform and will see uh, an active participation by more members of the House. Uh, same po, uh, part of the majority. photo uh, So, we were there. So, of course, um, it, 
is very important. Number one po talaga dito kailangan natin yung presensya para you can actively or participate in the proceedings. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are you with your questions? Uh, Rosalie? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Rob Lalo from Inquirer. Hello po, sirs and ma'am. Uh, I've asked this question to fiber groups na rin. Pero can we get your response to the presence of numerous Chinese vessels over the country's waters yung nasa EEC? Kasi nung last week po, warship, may warships daw sa West Philippine Sea. And then over the weekend, the search vessel naman sa may Benham Bay. Your thoughts po? Uh, the silence the need for our country to invest in our defense infrastructure as well as the installations located the islands that we already occupy, you know, uh, it's a matter of, it should be a matter of priority, actually. Uh, alam niyo naman, ayaw natin yung nagpapabuli. And papakita natin na meron tayong paninigitan sa ating bansa. And I believe that uh, the President is uh, taking uh, the right actions, no, uh, in this regard. And uh, kami naman po, nandito kami sa Congress to support kung ano man ang pangangailangan ng executive para ma-protection na nila ang territorial integrity ng ating bansa. And also, aside from, ano no, continuously filing diplomatic protests sa China, uh, we are one with the speaker, no, from Waltes, and also developing, lalong-lalo na yung ating mga nga airports, facilities sa kalayaan, no. So, napaka-importante, no, na uh, talagang masabi natin, no, na na yung presence natin is sa handol and uh, dapat lang talaga na hindi natin isinusuko yung ating uh, teritoryo at hindi tayo pumapayag na uh, patuloy na panghihimasok ng China sa ating ano, teritoryo. So, alam naman natin na hindi pababayaan ng ating Pangulo na mangyari yan at patuloy na, na gumagawa ng paraan ng ating Presidente para hindi na ito mangyari ulit at hindi rin magkagulo, lalong lalo na sa uh, usapin ng teritoryo ng ating bansa. Dagdagan ko lang din yung sinabi ni Kong Jay, uh, not, not, even, ano, not even airports and sea, hindi lang airports and seaports, but even the speaker encourage uh, tourism activities, tourism sites, business activities, or business uh, infrastructures na ilagay po dyan sa ating mga borders, saka Sa mga lugar na yan. And the President has made a clear stand uh, with that issue. Uh, ginagawa po natin lahat ng naayon sa batas at naayon po sa ating karapatan. And of course, very clear po sa Presidente na hindi po natin uh, ibibigay itong mga ganitong lugar. Well, <clears throat> number one, I think um, the question we should ask is, anong ginagawa nila dito? Wala na yun. So, kung nalayo na nila sa China, tapos nahihimasok pa sila sa teritoryo ng bansa natin. Kaya napakahalaga po yung partnership, bilateral agreement, bilateral agreements, and and cooperation that um, President Bongbong Marcos has been doing and strengthening with his trips because this strengthens the position of the President with, when it comes to our exclusive economic zone. Um, number two, um, we thank um, Speaker Martin Romualdez for being steadfast with his commitment that not even an inch will be sacrificed when it comes to fighting for our sovereignty um, and our territory. Number three, um, I would like to um, reiterate the position of Congressman Geraldine uh, Roman. It is necessary for us to double down on our defense uh, spending, funding, and allocation just so that we can properly protect what is naturally ours. Um, and of course, I do hope that China would respect uh, international norms when it comes to uh, cooperation and partnership. I mean, we all share in the same world, but the last thing we want is to have any violence or anything that untowards happening within our territories. That being said, Again, we will always fight for what is for the Philippines and what is rightfully owned by the Philippines. As kayo Benham Rice, ha? nasa kabila ng banda yun ng 
ng South China Sea. Yung Benham Rice, nung gobernador po ako, tapat na po yun ng Aurora at saka ng General Nakar. Ano ginagawa nila doon? Mga pagkagising ko, itong Commonwealth, sabi nila, kanila na rin. Hindi pa pwede yun. Hindi na pa pwede yun. Thank you. We call on Vic Sabintak from NET25 for today's last question. Going back po doon sa Article 7 and Article 6, dito po sa Congress, as a House, nasa second week na po kayo ng deliberation uh, as Committee of the Whole. Pero doon sa observasyon nga po sa Senado, doon sa Article number 6, kung wala silang rules, nagbibilang na sila ng hindi po voto. So may we know kung uh, what will happen kahit na ipasa ninyo yung RPX7 kung hindi sila papasa, ano pong mangyayari? Um, borrowing the words of our uh, Senate President, he always mentioned that he wants to avoid a constitutional crisis. And we also want to avoid a constitutional crisis. And this indeed is will be a question of, of of what will happen then when the House approves ours and the Senate is still uh, questionable when it comes to uh, how they will vote. Ito pa nga, huwag muna natin pag-usapan yung voto, yung paraan pala na pag-uvoto at procedure nila. Kailangan pa nilang talakayin. So, hindi pa naman, paano ba sasabihin nyo? There's still hope. And, you know, we have a new week ahead of us. And the Senate has so much, a lot of time to address these issues just so that we can move forward. And another um, thing going for the Senate, may 24 lang sila. Dapat nga, mas mahirap dito sa amin kasi 350 uh, congressmen kami. Eh. Kasi na, nakikita niyo naman po yung pagkakaisa at uh, direksyon Siguro sumasalamin po ito sa liderato ng, speak, ng speaker po namin pagdating sa pagtahak ng mga uh, batas at resolusyon na kinikailangan ng ating bansa. I can tell you what's going to happen pag hindi naaprubahan yun sa upper house. We shall have lost a very golden opportunity na patunayan na gusto natin magkaroon ng pagbabago sa atin. We shall have wasted the opportunity to positively impact the lives of so many, many Filipinos. We shall have lost the opportunity to show that we truly care for the interests of the people, ng taong bayan, hindi yung mga monopolyo, kaya yung mga particular business interests. So yun po ang mangyayari. Sana wag natin sayangin yung pagkakataon na ito. I don't know. Para bang may problema when the passion comes from our side of Congress? Bakit hindi makamajuli elected representatives of the people? Do not we, don't we reflect or the sentiments of our constituents and as a whole majority of the Filipino people? Sayang, pakiusap lang po, mayroon tayong golden opportunity. We've been talking about this many congresses ago, ang tagal-tagal na, and ito lagi ang problema, and kami dito sa House of Representatives, lagi dito ang kaning initiative, precisely because we are in direct touch with the people. Pero lagi na lang ang Senado ang nagiging malakid, masasabi, no? Maybe it's time for our friends in the Senate, patunayan, this is a different batch of senators. A batch of senators that can actually put in their hearts the real interests of the people. Trust us. We're just talking about the economic provisions. We're not going to inject anything political into this. Huwag natin sayangan itong golden opportunity nito. Tsaka, uh, dadagdag ko lang, no? Uh, tama si Kung Geraldine, huwag natin sayangin yung ating ano, no? pagkakataon para mabago yung ating konstitusyon. Uh, Lalong-lalo na yung ating economic provisions. At saka pag nangyari ito at hindi na naman naipasa sa Senado, uh, yung pagbabago sa economic cha-cha, hindi na natin masisisi 
no? Yung kung may mga grupo yung ating mamamayan, no? Kung meron na naman magsisimula ng ano, people's initiative na naman, no? Dahil siyempre nakakapagod na rin, no? Napapagod na rin yung ating mga uh, kababayan na matagal na nilang hinihingi na magkaroon ng pagbabago at as hindi natin may provide, no? So, ayaw natin mangyari yun. Gusto natin na uh, uh, sa tulong ng Senado, eh, magkaroon ng pagbabago, lalong-lalo na sa ating batas. Um, may kay lang po, no? Um, nakikita po natin yung difference talaga. Um, napansin ko, pag political cha-cha, parang isang maikling hakbang, tapos dalawang patras. Pero pag economic cha-cha, pinag-uusapan natin, usad lang ng usad. So, siguro it's time we start focusing on, sabi nga ni Kong Geraldine dati, move on, move on na tayo. Diba? Kailangan umusad ng umusad kasi we're not even talking about politics, we're not even talking about anything political. So, I think poli political cha-cha is out of the question, it's moving towards a backward direction. And economic cha-cha, which we are advocating in the House, is uh, making strides, moving forward, and um, reaching our goal in the House of Representatives. Thank you. Yes, a short follow-up. As mentioned before by uh, Deputy Speaker Suarez, na we are running out of, out of time kasi papasok ng politika by October. Kung hindi may papasa ng Senado ang kanilang APH number, number 6, dito sa house ay may papasa ninyo APH number 7. So, can you categorically state na the economic chat ay patay na? Well, it's hard to predict the future. Um, that's why we remain hopeful when it comes to the Senate deliberations that they're able to address all the hindrances when it comes to uh, voting for RPA 6. Um, kami po dito sa house, meron po kami schedule. We want to follow that schedule. We want to make sure that we're able to follow that time frame because our legislative calendar is um, packed for the year. Uh, although, pagdating po sa LEDA, so the priorities um, advance po kami sa lahat ng mga kailangan ng uh, uh, puno ejecutivo pagdating sa legislative measures. But syempre pagpasok po kasi ng July, budget season na po para sa kongreso yon At uh, doon naman po nakatutok ang lahat at marami sa mga mababatas dahil 2025 budget na po yung ating uh, tututukan. Kaya ang pakiusap po namin at paalala sa ating mga senador, uh, sana matapos na po natin ito sa madaling panahon. Hindi naman sa minamadali namin. Uh, kailangan lang nila ma-realize na baka kulangin tayo sa, pag sa oras. At hindi din naman namin minamadali kasi nakikita nyo naman, umahabot na hanggang alas 11 ng gabi yung deliberation po natin dito. Not to mention, we've already this had this discussion last year and did a roadshow with RBH 6, which we submitted to the Senate. So this is something like a reiteration of something that has already been done, although with the new developments uh, in our economy, it is important that we conduct the same hearing as well. Now, um, we again, I hope the Senate can uh, address the issues uh, that hinder them from moving forward. Tulad ng sinabi ko, you know, we have a window, but the window is slowly closing. And we need to be able to address this issue in the soonest possible time. Uh, para sa ganon, uh, ma-realize po agad natin yung uh, pinapangarap ng ating presidente na umabot tayo dun sa middle income status kung hindi ko ako natakamali nun. Um, by 2025, if I'm not mistaken. I think, I think that was the figure, but uh, don't quote me on that. I'll get the, the right data in fact. So again, we're hopeful that the Senate uh, will move with haste, understanding the urgency of the situation. So, I'm going to go to the DSGJ. 
Uh, sa history naman talaga ng paggagawa ng batas, mas mabilis at mas masipag talaga magtrabaho ang Kongreso. 